Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. Welcome to Warcraft Rumble Beginner's Guide. In this guide I will tell you everything you need to know to get started in Warcraft Rumble so that you don't mess up anything, you don't break your account, you will get the best possible start for the game. All about leader choices, buying stuff in the game, completing the right types of content, building your armies and some tips and tricks for the gameplay itself. So we have a lot of ground to cover, let's go. First of all, very early in the game you are presented with your first leader choice. You win two easy battles at the start, then you get to choose your first leader. And this already sets things apart a little bit, because you are offered a choice between three leaders, and those leaders are random. So you can get some great leaders, you can get some weaker leaders. In general, for a new player, I would highly recommend a leader that's kind of a brawly, bruiser type, so that they can just go in and fight and do stuff. That makes that makes life so much easier when your leader is big and chunky. So Baron Revender, Tyrion Fordring, and Gromash Hellscream would be the three best leaders that you could get, followed by Rent Blackhand, Hogger, and Cairn Bloodhoof. But overall, don't worry about this too much. You will get more leaders quite soon. You will get free leader choices probably already on your first day. So nothing is permanently lost no matter who you pick here. And in the end game, all leaders are playable. They just have very distinct playstyles and some are a lot more fragile than others. So getting a big bruiser for your first leader sets you up for a good start if you're new to this game. And not long after picking up your first leader, you're introduced to the grid. And the grid is where you can get new troops and new leaders for your armies. And the grid can be kind of confusing. I have a longer video explaining every single detail about this, but what you need to know about this at the start is that you're being offered random troops that you can buy. So no two players are offered exactly the same options. You will eventually get all of them, but that's going to take quite some time. So you will not be able to build your ideal army composition right at the start, but don't worry, you can make do, you will be just fine. Things to know about the grid. When you buy something from the grid, it resets the row, and it resets the column where you buy from. So those will then have new stuff available for you to buy. Another important thing is that leaders are offered on a five week rotation. Alliance leaders, beast leaders, undead leaders. So you can't buy all the leaders immediately. You will get them on a rotation. You can still get leaders that are not in the rotation at the moment from your random choices that you're offered sometimes. And another thing about the grid is that you want to buy as many different minis as you can at the start. Later on you will also use grid to upgrade your minis, but first try to pick up as many different ones as you can, because that's going to be important for you in order to progress well in the game. And that's because of how collection level works. Collection level, as you can see here, I have new unit bonus plus 946 experience. And going from level 1 to level 2 is going to cost 2 experience, so yeah, that's quite a lot. Collection level, improving collection level just improves your progression through the game. You get collection level when you get new minis. You get collection level when your minis are leveled up, and you get collection level when you upgrade the rarity of your minis. So then you get more XP for everything. Note that the XP needed to level a mini increases exponentially, so you're going to need a ton of XP later on, which means that the early levels are really easy to get, and those early levels will then improve your collection level rapidly, so that's why you want as many different minis as possible. Get your collection level going, and that will help you upgrade your army much faster. All the players start with the same team, so everyone gets these five minis at the start. Everything else is going to be a little bit random. So you get Griffin Rider, Dark Spear Troll, Null Brood, Chain Lightning, and Safe Pilot. Griffin Rider is a flyer that deals pretty decent single target damage. Dark Spear Troll, a range unit, Spear Trower, pretty decent single target damage again. Null Brood is a tank that deals AoE damage in the near vicinity. Chain Lightning is a fast casting spell that deals area damage, but not a whole lot of it at once. And Safe Pilot is an unbound mini. And an unbound mini is a mini that you can place anywhere on the map, and those are really important. Typically you don't want your entire team to consist of unbound minis, but you will need some in order to make good progress. And safe pilot, you can just shoot safe pilot somewhere, it crashes, deals damage, and then it starts going from there. And safe pilot is a top tier unit overall in the game, you will use that a lot, and you already get it for free to start, so that's awesome. Overall this team is actually quite well rounded. You can play pretty well in PvE with this. 
it could use another fast unbound mini perhaps so that you could grab chests and do things across the map a little bit better and maybe a little bit of area damage but overall this is not a bad team to start with at all actually like almost all the minis in this game many are situational though but still there's fun uses for just about every unit that you can think of still there are some units that you might want to pay a little bit of attention to if you happen to find them from the grid First and foremost of those would be the Quillbore. Quillbore is a cheap unbound tank and it's really super flexible and goes into practically any team. Earth Elemental is another unbound tank, a little bit more expensive, also only tries to target towers and enemy bosses. So it's a little less flexible than Quillbore, but if you don't get the Quillbore, then Earth Elemental could serve in its stead. Huntress is one of the stronger units in the game, very strong cleave unit, shoots claves that hit multiple targets very very powerful i like harpies a lot harpies are high damage flying units they're really fragile but they deal a ton of damage to single targets defias bandits are great they're a cheap cycle unit you can easily get through your deck with that and they stun when they attack so very flexible drake is another great one it's a flying unit that deals area of effect damage both both flyers and ground units so very flexible as well and then either gargoyle or meat wagon those are very strong units against bosses. They don't do anything really against other things, but against bosses, they are very powerful. So they can be helpful in some of the PvE missions. So those would be some of the units that I would look out for the most at the start. But you really, really want to just buy a lot of stuff. A couple of notes about building your army. Pay attention to the average cost of your army. So for example, here's one of my armies. This is a Murkai army. Average cost is 2.9, so this is quite cheap. And when your average cost is low, that means that you get to play a lot of minis, and then you will cycle through your deck quite quickly, which means that you will get those minis available again. And that means that you are able to respond to all sorts of situations. You need a counter unit against something specific. Can you find it? If all your minis cost like 6 or 5, you're playing them out very slowly, so you get to replace them very slowly, which means that you just can't find the right answers in time. The average cost needs to be low enough so that you will find what you need when you need it. Some other considerations that you should pay attention to when you're building your army. You usually want at least one or two unbound units. So units that you can place anywhere on the map so that you can react to situations on the map very flexibly. You need at least one tank so that you have somebody who can take hits and help your other minis succeed. Some area of effect damage because sometimes there are squad units that come in really huge swarms that you need to be able to get rid of and you can't get rid of them very well with single target damage usually something that hits quite hard so that you will be able to take down big enemies and a balance of units that fly and units that are on the ground because both have their strengths and weaknesses as you start building your army the game is going to start offering you stuff to buy from the shop with real money yeah, I mean, games, they want you to buy stuff, and remarkable, I know. So, what do you do with your money if you want to spend any money on this game? There's going to be a bunch of time limited bundles. They're offered to you at regular intervals, so don't feel too pressured about them. There's always more to come. Evaluate them mainly based on the number of coins they give you and the number of mini stars that would cost coins anyway, because the only way to get minis is to buy them with coins. Regular troops cost 90 coins and leaders cost 120 coins. XP tomes. XP tomes are generally bad early on because remember that collection level. That means that you get more XP from everything. When your collection level is low, the value of a tome is low because it doesn't give you much experience. Once you get your collection level up, then the value of tomes is slowly beginning to improve. And by far the best thing that you can buy in this game from the shop is the Arclight Booster. It's a permanent upgrade to your account that's offered once you reach 12 sigils. The gold came from this booster is going to make it at least 5 times as good as any other offer that you're going to see in the shop. For example, if you're going to play this game for a year, over your first year you're going to get more than 30,000 coins from this booster. But you can also play this game completely as free to play, don't worry about that. In addition to the big PvE campaign, the game also features PvP, and lots of it. PvP is unlocked at 8 sigils, so you're hardly anywhere into the campaign and you already get PvP unlocked. But I would recommend not to step into PvP at that point yet. Sure, that's an option, you can go and play PvP, 
I mean, it's not impossible. But the thing about PvP is that you really want to unlock your Arclight searches and your dungeons. You get those at 22 sigils and 30 sigils, and you get sigils from progressing through the campaign. So, because you want to get those as soon as possible so that you can start doing those, then that kind of means that if you go into PvP and you don't go into the campaign and unlock those, then you're just missing out. You may also want to buy the Arclight booster before you start doing a lot of PvP, if you intend to buy it, so that you will get more gains from that. The PvP mode in this game is partially pay to win. PvP has limited level caps. When your leader honor is below 1000, there's a level cap of 1 on all minis in PvP. So when you go into there, you're almost at level even if you go there like right at the start of the game. Obviously the opponent may have more minis, and they can also have talents on their minis that make them more effective, but the levels are going to be the same. Up to 2000 honor per leader, level cap is 3. And up to 3000 honor per leader, the level cap is 5. But once you reach 3000 honor with your leader in PvP, there's going to be no level cap. The level maximum level is going to be whatever players are able to get. The maximum level currently in the game in PvE is 30. And in PvP, your level is going to be your PvE level divided by 3 and rounded up. Which means that the maximum overall level in PvP is 10. And for example, if you have a level 13 mini, then that's already level 5 in PvP. So if you're between 2000 and 3000 honor, and you have minis that are below level 13 at that point, then your opponent is going to have a level advantage against you. So yeah, to get to PvP, you need to play some PvE campaign, although playing at under 1000 honor for each leader, you can do so with any level minis and have a relatively level playing ground. The next thing that's going to unlock is guilds. Guilds are unlocked at 10 sigils, and I highly, highly recommend joining a guild. Because guilds over time accrue rewards for the members, and the members can then claim those, and those rewards are really, really good. So you really want to join a guild. It's also easy to switch guilds, you can leave guilds at any time, you can join new guilds, so don't worry too much about your first guild choice, really. It's completely fine, but joining a guild is very, very good for you. As you keep progressing through the campaign, at 18 sigils you unlock uncommon upgrade for your first leader, and at 20 sigils you're going to unlock talents. And talents are super important, and talents make your minis much more powerful. You can get talents for minis once minis reach uncommon, and then another talent when it reaches rare, and another one at epic. And here is one of the biggest traps in the game. At uncommon, you can only buy one talent for your mini and you cannot switch. That's one talent, that, and you're stuck with that. Until you get your mini to rare, which could take weeks, your mini will have that talent and no others. Each mini has three talents available, and those are not equal. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. So you really have to be careful when you make your talent choices. Minis are upgraded by buying minis that you already own from the grid, which will give you mini stars. You need three stars to upgrade your mini from common to uncommon. Sometimes also on the grid you're offered directly uncommon, rare or even epic minis. And those are really, really good deals, because buying an uncommon, epic or rare mini directly from the grid is cheaper than upgrading an existing mini. So you should really consider taking those offers when they're available. 22 sigils is the most important point during your campaign progression, because at 22 sigils you unlock Arclight Surges. And Arclight Surges, two regions light up, and you can complete those missions with special rules, 10 missions overall, and you get new search on every Thursday and every Sunday. So twice a week there's going to be a search, and those searches are your main repeatable source of coins. Without the booster, you're going to get 800 coins per week from searches. With the booster, you can get 1200. So these are super important to unlock as quickly as you can, so that you can start doing these twice a week, so that you can start earning more coins. Another major unlock is dungeons, which are unlocked at 30 sigils. And dungeons are used to upgrade the army slots of your leaders. So your leaders have these army slots, they, they need to match the unit. So for example here, we have a troll in a horde slot. Troll is a horde unit, so troll gets a bonus level. And units can get up to three bonus levels from these slots. 
Then again, here we have an alliance unit in a horde slot, so that's inactive, doesn't give a level. You want to get all of these slots fully upgraded for your leaders that you play with to get many bonus levels on your characters. And you do so by taking that leader and going into the dungeon. Dungeon starts at level 5 for each leader, and every time you complete it with a leader, then it becomes more difficult for that leader. And you complete it more difficult, more difficult, more difficult, until level 22, which gives you the maximum upgrades per leader. The dungeon changes each week, and also the leaders that can complete the dungeon change each week. It's a five-week family rotation, so for example on a certain week you can only take horde leaders to a dungeon, then only alliance leaders, and so on. So it's really important to get your dungeons unlocked, so that you can start upgrading your leaders, because you have to wait up to five weeks to get specific leader to be viable for unlocking the army slots. The final unlock that you get through campaign progress is Heroic Campaign that you unlock at 50 sigils. The entire regular campaign is 75 sigils, there's 75 campaign missions, but you can start doing Heroics of the first ones already at 50. When there's a Heroic Campaign, the first clear of each mission is going to give you an XP tome, so you start to get a bunch of XP for your characters from these. Then, you need to clear these missions with all five families. So you need to clear them with Alliance, with Beasts, with Blackrock, with Horde and with Undead. And once you clear a single mission with all five, you're going to get 200 gold, 300 if you have the booster, and you're going to get a sigil. So this is the way that you progress past 75 sigils by completing your heroics. Those are all the main mechanics and systems in Warcraft Rumble. And I'm going to leave you with some gameplay tips as well, because how do you succeed in the actual fights? First of all, get more gold than your opponent. You want to mine gold, you want to open chests, you want to stop your enemy from mining gold and them from opening chests, because it's also an economic battle. If you have more gold, you have more units, and then you have an easier time winning. Also, all units have weaknesses, so when you see some kind of unit approaching, try to pick its counter unit, and then you will get a very favorable exchange. Also, you want to build and plan your pushes. You don't have to use all of your gold as soon as you have gold available. You can also sometimes save a little bit of gold to play specific units that work well together. And I cannot overemphasize how important unbound units are, because you can drop unbound units anywhere, so you can use them to take chests, and you can use them to distract the enemy, so that your damage dealers get more time to deal damage. So for example here, I'm dropping an unbound unit on the chest, so that I will get access to the chest real quick. Now that we're sending this attack, now I'm dropping an unbound unit behind the tower, so that the tower is going to turn and hit there, so that my units that are attacking have more of a chance to keep on the attack. Also a couple of nice tricks that you might not be aware of. One, when you're using a squad unit, so that the unit will have multiple members, you can split push with that. Just place it on the line, and then the unit is going to naturally go in two different directions. So here I can place my footmen over here, and now they are going to be split by that line, and they will actually progress through two different lines. And another thing, the maps are pretty big, so you need to scroll, but you don't have to scroll to see where you can place your units. Because if you're somewhere further ahead, then you can just place your units quite low, and they will appear wherever is the nearest legal location. So you don't have to keep scrolling, you can keep your attention where the action is, and still drop units that are going to appear elsewhere. I want to mine this gold, but I don't want to scroll, so I can just drop my miner here, and I know that it's going to progress through this lane. And that's it. You now know all the basics of Warcraft Rumble. You can find more detailed information about everything in the game right here on this channel. And good luck, and have fun. Thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and a special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, YouTube members and Twitch subscribers who make all of these videos possible.